This is Brunel Quay at Nayland, Pembrokeshire, on the southwest tip of South Wales. And we're looking along what was the end of the line, the railway line. And we are situated in a beautiful parkland, which is a local beauty spot dedicated to Brunel. And the great man is epitomized in a statue across the way here. And that is a replica statue of the original, which was stolen. Prince Charles unveiled the original in 1999. And beyond the year 2010, it was replaced with a cheaper metal because the original one was stolen for its bronze scrap value. Behind the trees up there is a station house, which was built in the 1850s in Brunel's time. And there's relics of a legacy to Brunel and between and just to the left of the statue you've got a metal seat with five chair backs depicting Brunel's life such as the Thames Tunnel, the Clifton Suspension Bridge, the Great Western Railway, the Great Eastern Ship and an image of the man himself and you've got placards mentioning Brunel's involvement in the area. You can see them scattered around the quayside here. And to the right of the picture you've got the original rails that Brunel laid here in the 1850s when he brought the railway line here to Nayland. And I've come from Bristol, Gloucester, <coughs> Bullop Hill in the Forest of Dean, following the main line from what would have linked London, Swindon, Bristol to link the line to Pembrokeshire, South Wales. And along this line, I've been to the major features of Brunel's work in Swansea around the area of Britain Ferry to Lanethley Railway Station and following it westward to Kidwelly where there's a bridge crossing a river where Brunel had to have a swing bridge another swing bridge I was able to photograph at Carmarthen and here the rails ended end of the line because Brunel developed Nayland as an industrial port he saw that this capacious haven, deep water, was one of the few harbours in Britain that would facilitate his Leviathan, the Great Eastern. And this would be a home port and behind me there would have been a iron girder bridge leading out to a pontoon where the Great Eastern could remain afloat at high water and low water and the ship would be taking passengers from here to India on to Australia without having to coal. So in other words the ship would sail around the world with its bunkers supplying all the fuel for the round the world voyage out to Australia and back. Great Eastern came here twice. It had a sad career in the sense that it was up here for <coughs> repairs, new paddle wheels, but it did achieve its crowning glory by laying the transatlantic cable and other cables from Aden up to the Suez Canal. Nothing remains in Nayland except street names and this railway but the Welsh in this part of the country are very proud of Brunel and because there are so few monuments standing to Brunel that are famous such as the Cliffness Suspension Bridge, the Saltash Bridge a lot of young people have a vague idea only of who Brunel was. But it is really interesting to see <laughs> that Brunel selected Nayland, he built Nayland, but nothing remains of it now except for a town. But what is interesting is four miles west of here is the town called Milford, Milford Haven, in Milford Haven, and you've got the 
Nelson Hotel there, where Mr. and Mrs. Brunel stayed twice in 1857 and 1858. So there is a vestige of the great man in this part of the world. And when I go around Brunelling for my book on the tracks of Isnabar Kingdom Brunel, I realize that he saw more of this country than a lot of people have done today. So if you want to see more of the country, I do recommend that you come to Pembrokeshire to see Nayland and the capacious haven of Milford Haven where Brunel stayed with his wife and left a lasting legacy. Thank you. I can't see this.